Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, can a pilot's alertness be monitored just by sitting in the cockpit seat? Measuring a rocket's temperature could help us go to Mars. And Lighthawk flies to save endangered porpoise species. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. During our visit this week to NBAA 2014, Jim Campbell had a chance to talk with Mark Lang of Aviation Modification Leaders, also known as AML, and learn about a new technology that is almost beyond belief. They discussed a system that is designed to increase the situational awareness in the cockpit by identifying fatigue, the effects of hypoxia, and the side effects of sleep apnea. There are additional benefits of the system, but these are the top three that have been identified as the short fuse to an accident. Lang said the working name for this system is Smart C, and they're working on an application of the system now. In December of this year, they plan to acquire a single-engine aircraft for testing and gathering data as they fly the airplane around the country. During the flight test program, they will be starting a conversation with the FAA about certification requirements. NASA has captured thermal images of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on its descent after it launched in September. It's hoped data from these thermal images may provide critical engineering information for future missions to the surface of Mars. NASA equipped two aircraft with advanced instrumentation to document re-entry of the rocket's first stage. The first stage is the part of the rocket that is ignited at launch and burns through the rocket's ascent until it runs out of propellant. During its return, NASA captured infrared and high-definition images and monitored changes in the smoke plume as the engines were turned on and off. The aircraft used were a NASA WB-57, a twin-engine high-altitude research aircraft, and a Navy NP-3D Orion aircraft. On launch day, the WB-57 and Orion reached their observation locations about 50 miles from the projected rocket trajectory. The rocket emitted enough thermal energy for the plane's infrared cameras to obtain data as the first stage descended at supersonic speeds off the coast of Georgia. After these messages, pilots work to protect an endangered porpoise species. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The nonprofit conservation group known as Lighthawk will begin flying monthly aerial surveys of the northern Gulf of California to save the critically endangered Vaquita porpoise, whose population currently stands at approximately 97 individuals. The International Union for Conservation of Nature has listed this porpoise as critically endangered and says immediate action is needed to prevent extinction. The biggest threat to the vaquita is commercial fishing using gill nets and trawlers. Lighthawk will conduct aerial surveys during the fishing season to show where fishing is happening in the northern Gulf of Mexico. Data from these survey flights will provide critical information on where and how many fishing boats are active in the porpoise's range. With this information, enforcement efforts on the water will be more efficient and effective. Lighthawk leverages a network of more than 200 volunteer pilots who provide flights each year to help conservation groups achieve their conservation strategies. Three Augusta Westland AW609 test pilots 
have received from the Society of Experimental Test Pilots the prestigious Ivan C. Kinchlow Award and were recognized at the Society's annual gala. The Kinchlow Award recognizes outstanding professional achievement and the conduct of flight testing by a test pilot member of the Society of Experimental Test Pilots and is the most visible recognition of the Society's contribution to the aviation community. The award was given to recognize the achievements of experimental test pilots Dan Wells, Paul Edwards, and Pietro Vinanzi for the successful power-off conversions and auto-rotation trials that were completed between March and April of 2014. The tests were conducted as part of the FAA civil certification activities and covered the full windmilling and autorotation envelopes, which earlier in 2014 marked another major achievement for the development of the world's first civil tilt rotor. After the break, if you're looking for a ready-made Air Force One, Airbus just may have it. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. Airbus has launched a new VIP cabin concept initially for the A330-200, offering a faster and more affordable way to the greater capacity, capability, and comfort of a wide body for both private and government customers. Called Summit, the concept features a VIP section at the front of the cabin and airline-style seating at the rear. The Airbus ACJ330 Summit Features a bedroom with in-suite bathroom at the front, followed by an office, a conference and dining room, and a working area, and then airline-style first-class and economy seating at the rear. The airline-style seating would be installed in production, which is faster and more cost-effective, and the concept can be evolved to meet customer needs. Free Flight Systems has introduced the FDX 200 1090 ES transponder, with integrated GPS system for FAR Part 25 business aircraft. The TCASI compatible system is a highly cost-effective alternative to expensive avionic upgrades for next-gen ADSB out compliance. The FTX 200 is ideal for business jet operators who do not require diversity mode but need an easily installed and high-performance ADSB compliance solution using their existing avionic systems. The system includes an approved ADS-B transponder and an integrated 15-channel WASP GPS SBAS sensor as the rule-compliant, high-integrity position source. It also enables integration with TCAS-I systems. The FTX 200 is among a family of cost-effective ADS-B solutions from free flight systems that give business jet owners significantly improved flexibility for meeting next-gen equipage requirements worldwide. Flying for the sheer fun of it saw its heyday with the ultralight movement in the 1980s. But when Sport Pilot was brought into being, ultralight seemed to fade away. However, the Quicksilver company stuck with it. It has now delivered their first two-place ultralight-style S2SE SLSA. A few weeks ago, Quicksilver made the first flight of a first factory produced ready-to-fly SLSA that's been sold to a customer. The test flight took place while the new owner, Tory Ward, looked on. It's reported that Ward was very impressed and happy with his aircraft that carries the new asymmetrical sail set pattern. The designated airworthiness representative who certified the plane said he was particularly impressed by the robustness and solid feel of the aircraft from the struts to the sails. Ward's friend, Lynn Villanueva, who also watched the first flight, said, quote, Watching the Quicksilver Sport 2SE take off was so exhilarating. I can't wait to experience flying with a bird's eye view of the landscape, end quote. Well, that's our program for October 24th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. 
Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new episode. And remember, the next generation of Airborne will be unveiled right after New Year's. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.